Hello, dear friends. Judah here. You know, talking and being with angels such as ourselves is like being with a true friend. With a true friend, a long time tried and true friend, you know that you can share anything and they are there for you with listening ears, listening hearts. And you know that whatever is said or done is done with love and that you will be accepted in whatever you share, whatever is on your heart. And this is the atmosphere that has been created here for you. And this is always our disposition towards you. Our disposition is that we are here listening to your heart, your heart, listening with ears of the heart and then responding in love, in love, in love. And, and as always, sharing with your best interest at heart. And you may, of course, take what you like and leave the rest because we trust in source first. And second, we trust in you and in your, 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 your magnetic pull towards source and your purpose and destiny. And we trust in the goodness of your heart, even if you do not. And we know that you are constantly moving towards and merging into source energy and love. And yes, we are responding in part tonight to the cry of this one's heart. Perhaps you relate. There are some certain areas of your life, maybe your family or your children, parents, or families can be the toughest, of course. Business life, different areas where, 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 where you feel you're hitting the same brick wall. And there's been uh, ever so much efforting. And the effort ha has seemingly equaled to very little, or maybe even nothing at all, or maybe even feels like a regression at times. And this is such a sweet spot. This sweet spot is, is the opportunity for surrender and to cease efforting and trying, totally resisting, yielding. And, 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 and there, there, there is the dark night of the soul, as they say sometimes. But it is, it is, it is, it is the place of creation. If you read the creation story carefully, it says there was darkness, darkness over the face of the deep. Darkness everywhere. And then God said, let there be light. And so darkness can be a friend if you can release your resistance to it. Lay down in the dark and rest and, and find yourself letting go. And here you see there is a story about the Gautam Buddha before he was known as the Buddha, he was a seeker and he was trying it all, trying it all, trying it all, this and that and the other. Fasting and this teacher and this and that and on and on he went and he was literally at the time of his enlightenment emaciated, emaciated having literally starved himself thinking that this surely would be the path to, 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 to overcome his troubles, his interior troubles. You see, for all of us, dear, yes, some of us have exterior troubles, but they are reflecting back to us interior, the interior troubles we are creating in between our two ears. Every thought, every thought, every thought creating, every thought creating, every thought creating. And then, and then the words, if we put words to those thoughts, all the more power, all the more amperage, all the more, more manifestation going into the thought. 
But the Buddha had struggled for six years as a seeker, literally starving himself nearly to death. His, his ribs were showing. And he finally sat down under the famed Bodhi tree and he, this is the part you don't hear about. You hear about how he fell into a state of meditation, how he awoke beaming golden light, how he awoke enlightened, but what you don't hear is that he sat down under the tree and gave up his trying, his efforting. He surrendered. He surrendered. Who knows, maybe when he sat down there, he thought, I'm sitting down here to die. I've tried it all. Nothing's worked. Life is suffering. As the common saying of the Buddha goes, life is suffering. But when he sat under the tree, he, he, he had a, a, a dream of himself expanding out, 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 so large that he covered, his body covered the entire continent. And his head rested on the Himalayans with, were his pillow and, and his hands rested the right in one ocean and the left in the other and his toes touching the tip of Africa. So how does one go from being starved, desperate, sick of it all, no answers, nothing working, to being a Buddha? Overnight, overnight in a dream, how does one expand into that, into, into a, a, a golden light that, that literally not only covered the continent as in his dream, but eventually touched people all over the world and beyond this world as well. It was in the giving up. It was in the letting go. This is the tipping point. The tipping point is the place where you let it go. And there are some areas where this vessel is still very much struggling with her ego and with letting go. And we will tell you this, and she understands this and she's looking for this day, the day that you stop, uh, stop and surrender it all and let it go is the day that you stop suffering. For all suffering, the suffering the Buddha spoke of comes only from the ego. In enlightenment, there is no suffering. Even with physical pain, even with danger, there is no suffering. There is no internal suffering. And when the Buddha awoke, the first words out of his mouth were, let's eat. You see, because he was done with his starving himself. Some of, the, some of us, some of you here, some of you listening, you are literally starving yourselves. There are people standing right in front of you with love and tenderness and compassion to give to you, but you're, you're so hurt, hurt and wounded inside, you can't receive it. And we know you don't mean to reject the love that's there for you, but you are. So if you can't receive their love, can you receive ours? Can you? And this is what we have been talking to, to the vessel about. She's ready. Are you ready? She is ready to give up talk, 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 and more listening, and more reading, and more studying, and more trying, and more efforting, and more of the right food, and less of that, and more of this, and less of that, more of this, and less of that, more of this, less of that, less of that, and it's never, never enough, you see. 
all of this efforting born from 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 the subconscious lie that you're never enough and it's never enough and there won't be enough and this is a lie and a lie can never can never bring you freedom and what you do based upon a lie can never bring you freedom <coughs> And so instead, she has been saying, especially when she gets some of your letters and emails and, and it is difficult to hear the suffering people are going through. And she doesn't want to send back a response, a pat, pat, patterned, another try this or try that response. What she wants is she wants us to show up in the room where you are and, and, and upturn what is not working and shift it all and transform the situation by transforming the hearts. The hearts, that's what she wants. And she wants that and we want that to give you an experience, a literal, visceral, physical experience. If we need to, if you need to feel it as a fire, a fire overcoming your body, burning from your head to your toe, or as a cool, fiery energy going through your veins, or as, as if you need to see it with your eyes as a mist filling in the room around you and, and, and experience the, the lightness and tra transformation of the, the atmosphere, whatever it, you need to experience to know that there is more beyond what you see. There is help, there is support. She wants and we want to give you an experience, an experience of unconditional love, an experience that you will not likely ever forget. Has someone ever said a particular word to you or phrase that you'd never forgotten? Why is that? Out of the millions of messages you've received in your life, why that one? Why do you still remember it? Because it was true and it, and it was spoken with the voice and wisdom of something, someone beyond. And a word like that will never be retracted and it will always bring freedom. And that is why you never forget it. And so may you in your heart, in this moment or in moments later this evening or in the morning hear very clearly and have your own experience when no one is there and no one can take credit and you hear the voice, something said to your heart that you most need to hear something you will never forget. And perhaps there are no words to describe it. It is only a feeling. Now we want to tell you a story. This vessel was writing this week for those in the course and she was remembering when she was very little, seven, eight years old, sitting, sitting, sitting in the pew at church and she heard, heard the, the pastor talking about hell and that she would certainly, and all those listening would certainly be going to hell if they did not take a particular course of action. And she listened and thought, I don't want to go to hell as any reasonable child would. And then she thought, and I most certainly don't want to be separated from Jesus. And she didn't know it then, but she knows it now. We came and settled all around her. That little girl sitting in that seat settled all around her. She could see with her physical eyes the mist all about her little body. And she just felt indescribably loved, indescribably loved. Now because of the circumstance and where she was and what was being said, she assumed that this presence all about her must be correlated with what was being said. And that was a childish mistake, you see, a mistake that many have made. 
the truth is we were there in an attempt to protect her from source being misrepresented to her in the threat of hell. You see? And so the pastor said she was feeling so overcome with love, so overcome, overcome. And the pastor said, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, come down this aisle. And her little feet carried her right down the aisle. And she did everything that the grown-ups there asked her to do, like good little girls do. And she did it all in response to our loving presence. And the adults explained to her what they thought was happening to her according to their definitions. This was the revelation that we gave to her this week. The truth is, she had an experience that was real, a visitation by the most powerful essence of love in the universe and it needed no explanation, no definition, no response, no spiritual practice, no baptism, no prayer, written prayer to be repeated was required. The experience was all it was meant to be. Nothing to be added or taken away and nothing to be explained. And the truth is, in that room full of thousands of people, this little one, the little one was the one who had a hold of something real, someone real, and the others were simply talking about it. So this is our, our wish and intention for you tonight. And yes, you may call our name or the name of any that you wish that is relevant and heartfelt for you. And it is our wish tonight to give you an experience from which you will never recover, from which you will be transformed into your likeness, your, your fifth dimensional self, your God self. And more of your God self will be revealed like, 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 like Neo in Matrix when, 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 when the light began to crack open the shell, his outer shell, the outer shell of his being, and the light began pouring out of him. This is the sort of experience of light emanating from you. And this is where the Buddha understood he missed it by looking, 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 trying, trying, trying. When all around, all along, all he needed to do was sit and just be because it was him. He was the light. Interesting because in the beginning he said all life is suffering. And in the end, the last thing he said before he left this earth was be your own light. Be your own light. And in the resting under that Bodhi tree, he was overcome with his own light and his own soul expanded, 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 expanded. And this expansion is for anyone here who wants it. Anyone within the sound of our voice may learn to expand the emanation of their light into their partnership into their bedroom, into their home, into their neighbors' yards around them, or into the nooks and crannies of their office space, or the places in which they work, or even you may eventually learn to expand your light emanation to cover your whole city, or your state, or your nation. And this is how, 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 this one reaches up and connects with us. She just lets her light begin to rise and rise and rise. Her light meaning her life force essence, her heart. And you may do the same, my dears. And we promise to meet you halfway. We promise you that. 
So pray and meditate and reach out, ask your angels for help. And as you, you open and elevate your heart towards us, we will most certainly meet you in the middle.